you are welcome to the Messiah Revelation Ministry. We are dedicated to end time events. I made a video about internet prophets in regards to end time deception, in regards to the warning in Matthew 24 verse 4 that in the last days many people will be deceived and because the final trumpet of heaven has sounded, the deception has increased. The internet and online technologies have made it possible for many people to deceive many people on a global scale. The appearance of false prophets, particularly on the internet, is one of the major signs of the end times and it is an indication of the last minute efforts by Lucifer and his agents to deceive as many people as possible. And so today in this message we are looking at how to detect a false prophet. Uh, we will do another video but I want to conclude that it is not sometimes easy to detect a false prophet. It's not sometimes easy to detect a, a false prophet. But we will go over um, the Bible and we can see how uh, we can detect a false prophet. But as I said, in some cases, it's not easy to detect who uh, is a false prophet. Uh, I would probably say it's easier uh, to know who is a true prophet, uh, but uh, it is more difficult to know who uh, is a false prophet. So we are going over and we need to look at um, the Bible and one of the things that we have to look at is prophetic accuracy. Uh, what do I mean by that? How accurate is the prophet? And the test is Deuteronomy 18 verse 22. And so we can look at uh, Deuteronomy um, 18 verse 22. Deuteronomy 18 22. When the prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, that shall not be afraid of him. And this is the test that many people refer to when um, they are looking for a false prophet when they are fishing for a false prophet um, prophetic accuracy what the person said did it come true uh, if it didn't come true then the person is a false prophet and how many times should it not come true once if it doesn't come true even once um, then the person is a false prophet or a false uh, prophetess based upon Deuteronomy 18.22. It's difficult. It's still difficult. Um, what about if um, a prophet, supposedly a prophet or a prophetess, uh, says something and it comes true? Does it mean that the person is a true prophet of God? It doesn't necessarily uh, follow that because in prophecy uh, there are two sources of the information, uh, one from God and two from uh, Satan. And there are a lot of people who are able to use um, divination to prophesy and they are able to use uh, witchcraft to prophesy. There are a lot of people who are seers. Uh, particularly in the African context. They are able to see, they are able to 
uh, prophesy, they are able to predict, and they are very accurate because uh, you have to remember that um, there are some people who have insight in the spiritual realm, and so they are able to predict events. They are not prophets commissioned or called by God. Uh, they are people who have spiritual insight and they use so many things including uh, divination and as you know uh, divination is an abomination unto the Lord um, there is an occasion where somebody um, say that saith the Lord and some people some people say it that saith the Lord now watch a video when um, a prophetess um, was saying that a celebrity will die and then the prophetess, prophetess said there says the Lord if you use a statement that says the Lord you claim that it was the Lord who told you that there said the Lord um, is a prophetic authoritative language um, in the Old Testament and so when you read the Bible and you see Jeremiah Ezekiel Isaiah using the word there saith the Lord they want to emphasize that what they are saying um, is um, authoritative it doesn't mean that what Jeremiah says on other occasions is not true but when they say there saith the Lord uh, is an important occasion for them to um, alert the world that what they are saying and uh, that um, comes before that saith the Lord is very very important in the same way when you read the Bible and then you um, you read the word behold behold um, the, 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 the writer um, wants to um, draw your attention uh, to the fact that what he is going to say is very important. And so the statement, behold, a virgin will give birth. Um, it means that uh, an important event is going to occur. Uh, somebody that I watched on the uh, on, 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 on in a video said um, a celebrity was going to die. That said the Lord, and the celebrity didn't die. It means that that person uh, is a false uh, prophetess. Because if you predict something and it doesn't come true, um, it's a lie. It's a lie because if it is true, it will come true. And so let's let's go through um, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10 to 11. Uh, it is my most favorite scripture, Isaiah 55, verse 10 to uh, 11. And it is a warning to those who speak or purport to speak in the name of the Lord. So let's look at Isaiah 55 verse 10 uh, to 11. For as the rain come down and the snow from heaven and return not thither but water the earth and make it bring forth the bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return into me void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing where to ascend it this is a very fearful scripture it is my favorite uh, scripture and anytime I read that scripture, I, I know that the Lord is truthful. Whatever comes from the mouth of the Lord 
has to be fulfilled. And the prophet Isaiah is saying that um, snow comes down, water comes down, and they water the earth so that uh, um, inhabitants of the earth will get food to eat. And the water and the snow that come from heaven, they don't go back to heaven. They stay on earth um, to accomplish the purpose for which the snow and the water was sent. In the same way, in Isaiah 11 verse 10, the prophet Isaiah is saying that the word that comes from the mouth of God shall not return unto God void. And so if the Lord says something is, go, uh, is, uh, something is going to happen, the word will not go to the Lord. If the, uh, Isaiah uh, prophesies that an event will happen, Isaiah cannot go and say the event didn't happen because the word of the Lord came on earth and it didn't accomplish what the Lord wanted the word to accomplish. And the word went to the Lord void. Uh, it's a disgrace. It's a blasphemy. And so if somebody says, there saith the Lord, based upon Isaiah 55, verse 11, that word must come to pass. So Deuteronomy 18.22 is a test for you to know who is a false prophet. The false prophet is someone who said something, he predicted, he prophesied, and the prophecy didn't come true. Even once in the Old Testament, that person uh, should be should be killed in the Old Testament. Um, so on the internet, if somebody posts a video predicting something and he predicted it in the name of the Lord, <clears throat> if it is a CIA um, officer predicting something, it doesn't come true, he's not a false prophet because number one, He's not a prophet or a prophetess. He's just a researcher. He's an intelligence officer using data, uh, data collected from, uh, from human beings, from human sources. But when somebody is prophesying in the name of the Lord, the person claims to have information from Elohim himself. And if you have information from the Lord himself, it means that whatever you see must be accurate. If it doesn't come true, then you are a false prophet uh, based upon Deuteronomy 18, uh, 22. And based upon Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11, anything that the Lord says has to come to pass. So, for example, when the angel Gabriel went to Mary and told Mary that Mary will have um, a son, even though Mary was a virgin, uh, Mary doubted. The angel Gabriel said, is anything impossible to God? And then the angel Gabriel told Mary, I stand in the presence of God. I stand in the presence of the ancient of days. It's very, very interesting. The angel Gabriel told Mary that he came from the presence of God, the presence of the truth. And so whatever message he was asked to bring to Mary, that message has to come to pass because based upon Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11 a word that comes from the mouth of the lord will accomplish what it was sent to accomplish it will not go to the lord void without accomplishing his mission and so for the internet prophets who purport to speak in the name of the lord 
and some of them blasphemously use they serve the Lord. They serve the Lord. Men and women, um, you need to repent. You are not true prophets of God. You are charlatans. You are fake. And people should not fear you. For anybody who has said something in the name of the Lord that has not come to pass, um, that person is a false prophet. But still, it is not easy to detect a false prophet. I'll take the case of Jonah. Uh, Jonah went to Nineveh and he prophesied in the name of the Lord. Forty days and there will be judgment. Forty days and there will be judgment. Forty days and there will be judgment. Uh, Forty days passed and there was no judgment on Nineveh. Um, what Jonah said didn't come true. And does it make Jonah a false prophet? Um, no, even though what he said didn't come true. Uh, the case of um, Nineveh was a case where a prophet was sent to warn Nineveh to repent and there will be judgment. And Jonah went there and he prophesied judgment. But Nineveh repented the king and the people of Nineveh, including their animals, um, including their pets. Uh, they went on um, fasting and the Lord uh, withdrew the, the, the judgment. And so Nineveh was spared. But you have to remember that it came to the time of the prophet Nahum. And Nineveh did not repent, and at that time, and the Lord destroyed uh, Nineveh. Based upon Isaiah 55:11, a word given in the name of the Lord should come to pass. And so here there's a warning, and that I'll give to the internet uh, prophets, the false prophets. If you speak in the name of the Lord, um, if you say, there says the Lord, or you don't say that says the Lord, but you say, the Lord told me, the Holy Spirit told me, um, or the angel of the Lord told me. Um, if what you say didn't come true, it means that you are a false prophet, and judgment is come to you, and there are so many reasons why judgment is coming to you. Uh, you are speaking the name of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told me, and whatever you are saying is a lie, and I believe you are blaspheming the whole but the Holy Spirit. And one of the unpardonable sins that anybody can commit is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. You are saying something using the name of the Holy Spirit and you give the impression that the Holy Spirit lied. And I'm sure I will, I, will, I, that I will consider it to be a blasphemy. And if it is a blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, uh, it's a sin that is not pardonable. If you blaspheme, blaspheme the name of the Holy Spirit, um, you face eternal judgment. If somebody comes on the internet and prophesies in the name of the Lord, the Lord told me, Yah told me, Ayah told me. And they, they, they use very, very dramatic names. Um, they use those names to give the impression that they know the Lord by his rare name, his Hebrew name, Ayah, Yah, Yah told me. And if what Yah told you and you uh, preach on the internet, in the radio, uh, in your book, didn't come true, um, you are a false prophet um, based upon Deuteronomy 18.22 and Isaiah 55 verse 11. 
And a special issue arises with the prophets who predict death. They prophesy death. And they mention names. About two or three, this person will die, uh, this politician will die, um, this pastor will die, this celebrity uh, is going to die, and um, he will die. And they, they publish it, and they publish it in the name of the Lord. I'll call it death prophecy. Death prophecy. It's very, very dangerous uh, because if somebody comes on the internet and predicts that a person will die because the Lord has said the person will die, the person is a sinner and the person will die, um, the death has to come to pass. Why should it come to pass? It, it, it should come to pass because if it doesn't come to pass, whoever said a person will die and the person didn't die will qualify as a, a false prophet based upon Deuteronomy 18.22 and based upon Isaiah 55 verse 10 to 11. They are speaking in the name of the Lord. And Isaiah 55.11 is saying that a word coming from the mouth of the Lord shall not go to Elohim empty, void. It will fulfill the purpose for which the Lord was sent. So Elohim decrees from heaven, Pastor Jones or Pastor uh, Joel or Mama Ruth is going to die uh, because Mama Ruth is a sinner. Mama Ruth is a witch. Mama Ruth um, did A, B, C, and D, and then they repent. And so Mama Ruth, or Pastor Jones, is going to die. And Yah told me, Ayah told me, Elohim told me, if it doesn't come to pass, that person is a false prophet based upon Deuteronomy 18, um, verse 22. And let's go to the Bible, and let's go to Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah. Um, the Lord sent Isaiah to Hezekiah to tell Hezekiah that he was going to die. Death was imminent and the prophet went to Hezekiah and told him to prepare for his death. And Hezekiah prayed, he wept, and he told the Lord he had done a lot for um, for, for the kingdom of God and the Lord changed um, death and told the prophet Isaiah to go back to Hezekiah and tell Hezekiah the Lord had given Hezekiah 15 more years and so in this case you remember that the word from the prophet Isaiah was going to pass Ezekiel was going to die because the same prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 55 verse 11 that a word coming from the mouth of God will fulfill the purpose for which it was sent. And so the internet um, prophets, those particularly who come on the internet and they say, uh, people are going to die. It's not one person, it's not two person, but several um, people. You need to watch. And uh, unfortunately, um, we have to watch about several people who, quote unquote, are going to die. And the Lord has said it. And they are going to die. Um, what about if they don't die? Uh, is the person who said it a false prophet? based upon Deuteronomy 18 verse 22, yes, based upon Isaiah 55 verse 11, yes, but based upon Jonah, um, Nineveh repented and the Lord spared Nineveh from judgment. Okay, so 
is there a case where a prophecy comes and the prophecy says Pastor Jones will die, politician um, Mary is going to die, but they don't die. Uh, is it the case that those people repented and because they repented and God did not carry out the decree of death? Is that the case? That's why I'm saying um, sometimes it's difficult to uh, to conclude to um, to fish out for uh, a false prophet uh, because there's a prophecy of death and it has been broadcast uh, over the world. If you broadcast on the internet, you are broadcast over the world, and the death, the judgment or death very specific didn't come true how do we look at uh, the prophet or the prophetess based upon deuteronomy 18 22 uh, based upon isaiah 55 verse 11. Now definitely uh, we see a false uh, prophecy here uh, let me tell you something in the occult realm um, in the occult realm um, some people prophesy about an event that is coming, a judgment that is coming, and they work enchantments to make sure that the judgment comes in. Uh, I'll give you a personal example. A pastor told me I was going to die some time ago, um, around about 2007 and he gave me one week to live so the prophecy had come and the prophecy came in the name of the Lord quote unquote that I will die in seven days and he told me what to do but something in me told me that um, the pastor was not legit. He was not legitimate. And I had a feeling that uh, he was in the court. So he asked me to do something which I didn't do. I went on my knees to fast and I fasted. And the seven days came. I'm still alive. Um, I'm talking about something that happened in 2007 where somebody prophesied that I would die in seven days. And the thing was very frightening to me because I also know that somebody died and somebody was shot dead. It happened in Baltimore. A Nigerian business person was shot dead and the pastor told me that he had warned that man that he was going to be killed but the man didn't listen to him and the death came um, a business person from nigeria he was shot by by people people who just went to his house and they shot him to death and this pastor came to me that he had given the prophecy to him and he didn't take it serious and i believe that he did that just to frighten me and in the occult realm that's what they do in some cases they frighten you that you are going to die and they ask you to do certain things. In some cases, it's a way of initiating you into uh, the all courts or the court that they are in. Because you fear death, uh, because these false uh, prophets um, always rely on fear, fear of death. I didn't succumb to the tricks. I just went on my knees 
and the prophecy didn't come true and the man stopped calling me and the man is in the business of enchanting certain things to come on people uh, in some cases they will predict something and the thing comes true and you trust them because they predicted something some time ago it came true it came true once and so you trust them it's, it's a strategy used by uh, people in the occult, uh, in the courts, when they prophesy something, they go and enchant for the thing to happen. And when the thing happens, uh, they get a lot of credibility. I'm talking from a personal experience. I'm talking f uh, from an experience where a pastor, and the pastor was an African, and he was in the court, or he was an all court. I didn't know that. And he was able to predict something about me that came true. It came to pass. And so I trusted him. So he came the second time, this time predicting death, that you would die in seven days, unless I give you a handkerchief unless I give you this particular handkerchief to protect you you are going to die in seven days definitely the handkerchief probably was um, an initiation I mean the court in the demonic uh, kingdom and they initiate people in the Freemason, in the Illuminati, they initiate people. A lot of these demonic pastors in Africa initiate people into their court. And they predict something about you, it comes to pass, then you trust them. And then when they get you, that's why they give you demands. And it's a way of initiating you into the dark kingdom. So is it easy to predict a false prophet? Sometimes, no. Let's go into the case where a prophet or a prophetess predicts judgment. And the judgment has not come to pass. Does it mean that the prophet or the prophetess is a false uh, prophet or false prophetess? Not necessary. Because when somebody prophesies about judgment and the judgment has not come true, that doesn't mean that the person is a false prophet. Not necessary. Um, let's take America. As an example, there are a lot of prophecies about America, destruction of America, invasion of America. It has not come yet. America has not been invaded. America has not been attacked. And somebody says that um, the Lord told me America will be attacked. America will be invaded. Um, if the person gave a year, like the invasion will come 2010, the invasion will come at 2026. The invasion will come um, uh, 2024. Uh, if there's a timing and the invasion or the attack doesn't come, uh, based upon Deuteronomy 18:22, based upon Isaiah 55:11, the person is a false prophet or a false uh, prophetess. You have to remember that certain prophecies do not have a time attached to it and the lord normally gives time to prophecies particularly uh, prophecies about judgment and so when you hear a prophet giving a timing about a judgment it's very special 
Because normally the Lord doesn't give a timing. If the prophecy doesn't come true by that time, then that person who gave the prophecy necessary is a false prophet or a false prophetess because a time is attached to it. In some cases, um, there's no timing, but the prophecy is fulfilled. And the dramatic example is the case of Daniel and King Belshazzar. Many, many take it. Your kingdom has been given to the Medes. That was a prophecy that Daniel gave to the king. And the prophecy was fulfilled the same day. And the prophet Daniel didn't say it was going to be fulfilled the same day. And probably Daniel didn't know that the prophecy was going to be fulfilled the same day. But it was the counsel of Elohim to quicken the prophecy. And so the prophecy came the same day as the prophet Daniel said, many, many take a person. Your kingdom has been weighed and it has been found wanting. And your kingdom has been given to the Medes and the Persians. The prophecy came the same day. But what am, am I saying? What I'm saying is this. Somebody prophesies, says that judgment is coming. Judgment has not come. Does it mean that the prophet is a false prophet? No. In the case of the United States, there are so many prophecies about America. And I've already done a video, 2018, in the vision I saw. Um, I saw people running away, and I heard a radio announcement that Russia was going to attack the United States in 30 minutes' time. It's a prophecy about judgment. And I was not, I was not told when it will, um, it, will, it will come. In the vision, the attack was going to come in 30 minutes. But if I had gone out to say America will be attacked 2018, the time I made the video, and America was not attacked. Then I go into Deuteronomy 1822 as a false prophet. I go into Isaiah 55 11 as a false uh, prophet. I've seen the color yellow over America um, when um, it happened in Baltimore. And I heard a voice, brimstone and fire, brimstone and fire. And I know that it is about destruction of America by brimstone and fire. <clears throat> the same process whereby the Lord destroyed <clears throat> the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So the prophecy is coming, America will be destroyed with brimstone and fire. But there's no date. I was not given any date. So if I go ahead and say America will be destroyed by brimstone and fire, and I give a date, I'm going into Deuteronomy 1822 as a false prophet. I'm going into Isaiah 55 verse 11 as a false prophet. Uh, let's look into another issue. Um, does a prophet or a prophetess know everything? No. And so if somebody gives the impression that he knows or she knows everything, and that person is a false prophet, and because the Lord doesn't give knowledge to only one person, 
the Lord has so many uh, prophets and prophetess. The other day, Elijah thought he was the only prophet around. And the Lord told Elijah, no, we have thousands of prophets, those who have not. They have not bowed down to worship Baal. I have a lot of them. You are not the only prophet. And Elijah was able to command fire from heaven. And he thought he was the only prophet around. And so a prophet doesn't know everything about God. And if somebody gives the impression that he knows everything about God and he or she is the only person uh, who is a chosen vessel, um, that is not um, good. It's not a good sign. Um, it's probably a sign of a false prophet or alternatively, it could be a prophet who um, is arrogant um, or he thinks he is the only person around. Elijah was not a false prophet. He was a true prophet of the Lord, but he thought he was the only prophet around. That was his thinking. And the Lord said, no, you are, the only, you are not the only prophet around. I have so many other prophets. So did that make Elijah a false prophet when Elijah thought he was the only uh, prophet around? No, not necessarily. That's why I'm saying sometimes it's not easy to detect a false prophet from a good prophet. A, a true prophet. But what I want you to know is that a prophet or a prophetess doesn't necessarily know everything about God. And in some cases, a prophet's wife will die and the prophet wouldn't know. Something will happen to a prophet. That prophet wouldn't know. It would take another prophet to come and do a warning. Because the Lord does not give his knowledge and revelation to only one person. Um, there are some um, exceptions, though. The Lord was going to destroy the world by flood. It was only one person who was told, Noah. The Lord was going to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. There's one person who was told, one, Abraham, the prophet of God. And so in the whole world, it was only Noah who knew what the Lord was going to do. It was only Abraham who knew what the Lord was going to do to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Moses 3, 7, the Lord will do nothing except that he reveals his secret to his servants and the prophets. I've made videos and, in, and I always repeat that it was revealed to me the final trumpet of heaven has sounded and it was it's based upon revelation I received on August 27, 2013. Um, I don't know whether that revelation has been given to any other person before or is going to be given to somebody else in the future. The revelation that the final trumpet of heaven has sounded, there are seven trumpets that were shown to Apostle John. If you read Revelation 8 uh, verse 2, and the Lord showed me, um, he said, you must look for the angel who sounded the seven trumpets. And so my interpretation um, of the vision is that the seventh trumpet of heaven has sounded. Um, by the way, looking at visions and dreams, they are given to men and women of God and the men and women of God have to interpret the visions. 
and they misinterpret the visions and they prophesy based upon that misinterpretation are they false prophets that's what i'm saying it's not easy to identify a false prophet it's not easy daniel was given a lot of visions they were very complex and daniel the master dreamer himself could not interpret the visions and special angels were sent to daniel to interpret those visions and those visions are related to the end times if the angels had not gone to help daniel to interpret the visions daniel would have wrongly interpreted the visions and would have prophesied wrongly and so elohim quickly sent angels to him to interpret and the vision in the same way um, angels uh, were sent to interpret uh, the book of revelation to uh, apostle john and so what i'm saying is that a prophet or prophetess is given a vision and god's vision is based upon symbols and parables and the person is not able to adequately interpret the symbols and the parables and speaks on that basis and he's wrong or she's wrong um, in that case is she a false prophet did she see the vision yes the vision was true but he was not able to interpret the vision um, he was not able to decipher the symbols um, is she or he a false prophet is a very difficult question it's not all the time easy to fish out a false prophet or a false prophetess the next thing is visions weird visions the vision is very weird mm. Somebody comes out and says the Lord showed him or her visions, and the vision is about nasty things, nasty uh, visions about people having sex. Um, is the person a false prophet or a false prophetess? Uh, just because these soul visions and the visions are weird and you think the visions are nasty and so a holy god will not show the visions to the prophet or the prophetess you are wrong you are wrong personally i've seen visions where two women are were having a sex white women from netherlands i mentioned the name from netherlands they were having sex in the vision and i called somebody to warn warn him that i saw two women and having sex in your office and the person said um and then i told him the women are from netherlands netherlands and the person said thank you thank you thank you because i have an ngo and it's been supported um, from netherlands and some of my workers were sent to netherlands recently so it's possible that they have been inducted into some sexual immoralities yes the lord showed me a vision two white women from netherlands having sex and this vision came around december 2023 and then i had to call somebody to warn him and the person confirmed that yes he has an ngo and the ngo is sponsored in netherlands and this just sent um, a lady uh, to to netherlands for training and so when somebody dreams or has vision about things that are weird uh, including uh, sex that doesn't mean that the prophet is a false prophet or the vision is wrong 
In the same way, I've seen visions about uh, women. And the woman, a woman and a man, a woman, an African woman and a white woman. Um, in a compromising position is a vision and the Lord was telling me something about it sexual immorality I've seen men having um, sex men the Lord was showing me the spread of homosexuality when I say I saw men having sex and you, you are saying that the law wouldn't show you sexual impurities in the vision and so you're a false, a false prophet. You don't, know, you don't know how the Lord communicates. Weird visions does not necessarily mean somebody is a false prophet. Divine intimacy. Um, this is the term I've coined, divine intimacy. Uh, somebody purposed to know God, or rather, the Lord interacts with him on or her. And normally, I, I hate using the word the Lord told me, Christ told me, the angel told me. Um, I prefer not to use those terms. But some people are comfortable, they say it all the time Oh, the Lord told me, the Lord told me. And any time you say the Lord told me or the Lord told you, you are moving closer, closer to Deuteronomy 1822 because it means whatever the Lord told you has to come to pass. If you say the Lord told me, and a lot of people like using that phrase, the Lord told me, particularly in the United States, and I hate it. When people say, the Lord told me, the Lord told me. If it is true, the Lord told you, that is fine. But if it is a phrase you are using, the Lord told you, and you create the impression that the Lord engages in conversation with people day and night in the morning, I have difficulty. Does it mean that when somebody gives the impression that the Lord talks to him or her every day, the, the person is a false prophet. I have, I have difficulty. It's not easy. Because for me, the Lord doesn't speak to me like that. The Lord speaks to me in dreams and vision. And through my prophetic experience, when somebody appears and is God, I know. When somebody appears in a vision and is Jesus Christ, I know. Because the Lord appears as a man that I know and the Messiah appears as a man that I know and the man and the son who are symbolically used to represent God and the Messiah, I know them. And so in that, on that occasion, I can say the Lord told me, or on that occasion, I can say uh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, told me. But other than that, personally, I don't like saying the Lord told me, the Lord told me. Um, I, I will probably say that when you see somebody who says the Lord told me, the Lord told me, the Lord told me, and they seem to give the impression of divine intimacy. The Lord knows them and talks to them every day. I have difficulty. Um, I don't want to conclude the person as a false prophet or a false prophetess. Because when the Lord is talking to the person, I will not be around. I'm still fasting. I fasted three days. And um, I will continue to fast um, for the Lord to give me discernment about 
and false prophets, particularly those who show or give the impression that they have divine intimacy with God. The Lord told me, the Lord told me. I just want to advise, you cannot jump into conclusion to condemn somebody and claim the person is a false prophet or a false prophetess. Because the standard that you use um, may be human standards. You think somebody is a false prophet because the person is arrogant, um, because the person, um, uh, the person gives the impression that um, he or she is anti-American. You are being arrogant. Or um, the person is a woman, and so a woman cannot prophesy. So that person is a false prophetess. Or the person is black, or the person is white, or the person is Chinese. So the person cannot prophesy. You are being ignorant of how God communicates. The prophet Balaam was sitting on an ass, a donkey. The donkey saw an angel standing in front. The prophet Balaam didn't see the, the, the angel, but the donkey saw the, the angel. The Lord communicated with a donkey. The prophet didn't hear the communication. The communication was heard by a donkey and the donkey talked to the prophet and said there's an angel standing in, 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 in your presence you are missed but you can't see him the lord uses the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise you have to identify the false prophets but the job is not easy it's not easy in some cases, you need discernment. Thank you for watching.